Hi friendly friends, it's Amy from Savor Salvage Scent and hope this finds you well. Um, continuing with a series that focuses on the contributions of uh, black and brown people no matter where they fall in the diaspora. Um, today I am going to talk about five of what I find to be some of the most interesting uh, Middle Eastern or Arabic scents that I have gotten my hands on. Um, and. Um, it's quite a range of kind of experiences, but I just thought I'd share some with you. I would love to hear from you. Um, I'm still learning a lot about um, scents from this part of the world, and I know that um, the culture is, is crazy about perfume and scent. It has a long history, so I would love to learn more if you would love to share. Um, so let me talk to you today about five scents that I have um, been enjoying. The first, and they're kind of in order of how much I love them. Um, the first few I would say are a bit more challenging for me and the ones toward the end are the ones that I'm an instant love and crazy about. Um, so the first is um, Shagaf Oud um, by Swiss Arabian. And um, I read, uh, I would say most of these actually are really kind of very highly recommended. Um, reviews, Frey Grantica, YouTube, reviews, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> and I kept reading that a lot of people compare um, Shagaf Oud to, um, oh, there's a land come, darn it, now I can't think of the name, but it's basically like a, a rose and oud combination. Um, and uh, I'm going to spray this, and I also have it um, on a scent strip, so I can tell you about the uh, dry down. Mm. Um, so I'm still learning to kind of pull out oud as a scent. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what they say the notes are. Um, Shagaf oud is made by Swiss Arabian and sadly I couldn't find the year that it was kicked off. Uh, the top notes are saffron, the mid notes are rose, agarwood, or oud, and the base notes are praline, vanilla, and oud. And here's what really surprises me about this scent. It seems like as I learn more about um, Middle Eastern scents, it felt to me as I was looking through like hundreds and hundreds that a lot of them are marketed as unisex fragrances that I think would be marketed to male or women here in the US, so, or men or women. And so it's really interesting um, because when I read these notes and read that it was compared to the, um, Lancome scent, I assumed that this would be a very distinctly um, feminine marketed scent, but I actually am surprised to me, again, I'm all for you wear what you love, no matter where you fall on the gender spectrum, um, or any spectrum for that matter, um, but to me this almost has a masculine, or for me, a very, very strong uh, scent, and yes, there's rose, I mean, definitely you can pull rose out. Um, it's interesting a lot of people talk about how it's like a praline bomb and I don't really get that I get um, a rose a little sweetness and the oud and to me oud you know oud can take on a million different scents in my experience uh, but this has almost a I mean definitely a woody smell but it has almost like a medicinal smell and so I think part of the reason I'm a bit challenged by this scent is I've only known it in summer months and I have a feeling that this is one that will be just totally gorgeous in the fall or winter. A um, little strong to me now and again a little medicinal and a little masculine leaning for my taste but I think as it softens um, as like the softer vanillic notes come out um, and the medicinal kind of nature dies down I think will be beautiful in the fall and winter so um, this is can be found uh, for about $45 on um, online and again a lot of people compare this to um, one of the Lancome House of uh, Maison Lancome scents it's very expensive I think it's like two or fifty three so um, quite a steal and my understanding is that they're pretty pretty close to being duplicates um, so again Shagaf Oud by uh, Swiss Arabian the second that I'm going to talk to you about is 
Mm. This is another one that I will say is somewhat challenging to me, but I, I just, I think I know myself enough to know now that it's going to grow on me over time. Um, I was looking for, I love the smell of dates and raisins. I know, weird maybe. Um, and I was looking for a scent that really, really is prominent in date. And I kept reading about uh, the scent, Dates Delight. How about that bottle? Wild, by the way. Look how it opens. Not what I expected. Very cool. All of the, I believe all, most of the House of Oud or this line, they're all in these kind of egg bottles in different colors. Um, and I'll be frank, I am on a pretty limited salary and I tend to go for perfumes that go up to the 50, 60 range. And then when we get past that, that's an occasional gift. But these are, I want to say about 250 normally and so I was lucky to get this for like 120 130 which is a lot for me like that is a one or twice a year kind of thing and I have to be honest this is not an instant love but as I am getting to know it better I think it's probably like sometimes the thing I love the most the things I love the most and this goes with music wine food are the ones that challenge me at first and I have a feeling this is gonna grow on me but anyways all this to say let me read you the notes and then I'm gonna talk about what's prominent, what's surprising about it. So, Dates Delight by the House of Oud, first created in 2016. The top notes are peony and dates. The mid notes, or cormoran, corm I hope that's, I'm saying it right, cormoran, um, that is like a, it's like a chemical compound that I read is very hay-like, mown hay. Um, so the mid notes are cumarin, caramel, Tonka bean, which is one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. It's kind of like a resinous vanilla bean. Kind of looks like a coffee bean. Uh, not quite as sweet, sugary sweet. Um, so tonka bean and cinnamon. And then the base notes are honey, labdanum, so a, a resin, um, benzoin, which is also a resin, vanilla, and sugar. So I read, and, if, and I heard a few reviews where people were just saying, this was straight up date, honey date. And I was like, sign me up for that. Because I would like to walk around smelling like dates and honey. However, so what really, really comes out for me, I'm going to spray this. Um, again, I have it on the dry down on the page, but I want to give you an idea of what I first get. Hooey. Okay, so I'll be honest. This is a really challenging scent for me in the beginning. Um, this to me is really, I mean, and again, like I wear all kinds of like masculine marketed perfumes. This to me is like super, to me, super masculine. Um, and while I can smell a little bit of date and honey and amber, man, I get this blast of like, again, a medicinal scent, which I'm guessing is oud in this case. And again, I, it's not that I always dislike oud, but some, sometimes it lends itself to this kind of strong medicinal quality. And so it's, for me, almost hard for me to get, I will be honest, almost hard for me to get past it. But if you can just be a little patient, you being me in this case, once it dries down after five or 10 minutes, then the date and the honey starts coming out. And again, I think this is another one because of its resinous nature that I think will be probably really gorgeous in fall and winter. Um, I want to try other scents of theirs uh, to see how I do with them because it also could be a thing where it's just not great on my skin at first but once the date starts coming out more and that medicinal kind of strong wood thing kind of calms down a bit then to me it starts to get gorgeous. Um, so again, Dates Delight. I don't know if you can see, it actually says the House of Oud on the bottom of the bottle, but they're really, I mean, they're crazy beautiful. They look like, I don't know, fall from the sky artwork, gorgeous. Um, so that's the second one. And now we start to get into the ones that I'm really crazy about, um, that were just instant loves. Still somewhat challenging though. Um, the third is Al Haramain's Maka. And um, I will say uh, there are so many Alharamain oils. This, so this is more of like an atar type, like an oil. Again, really beautiful, I think. Um, oh, I'm, 
so if the house of oud was expensive this is very very affordable i think i paid like 13 online and i think it's because it's an oil this i mean i put like a drop on and it lasts me oh my gosh like all day like end of the day i can still smell it it definitely changes a bit and softens but really really um powerful so let me read to you a little bit about the notes this did not i could not find a year that it was um founded as well but the top notes are green notes and citruses. The mid notes are jasmine, orange blossom, and it says big strawberry. True. And then the base notes are amber, resins, musk, powder, and vanilla. And it's wild to me that there are so many notes in this because honest to God, okay, so who's to say why we like what we like? I was on the search for a strawberry scent. I love the smell of strawberries. I love the smell of natural strawberries. I also growing up as like a 70s, 80s kid, there were a lot of like fake strawberry scents growing up. I kind of love it because it reminds me of being a kid. And this is, I'm gonna describe to you the things that come to mind and none of them sound very sophisticated, but I love this scent. It, it's beautiful and I think calming and just does something for me, probably pulls on scent memories, but it smells like to me a mixture of car air freshener and what I mean by that is like most car air fresheners when I was growing up were musky and so it's got this super powdery musk it also smells a little bit like when I was growing up baby doll heads smelled a certain way they smelled powdery they sometimes were even scented to smell like fruits like strawberries so this smells like this weird combination between like musky head shop, air freshener kind of thing going on, co combined with the powderiness of manufactured plastics and strawberry. All I can say is it, it smells really soft and nice and pulls on memories and makes me feel like a kid and then it softens and gets like super, super nice. It gets more sophisticated when it dries down a bit. But um, if you like any of these things, powder, kind of a plasticky kind of scent, strawberry, this is awesome. It doesn't, to me, smell like anything else I own. It's so inexpensive. It makes me feel really strongly like smelling good when I wear it. Um, yeah, anyway, so El Haramein Maca. <clears throat> Who's to say why I like what I like? I like the smell of powder and strawberry and baby doll heads. Who oh, no. knew? Okay, the last two um, are two that are probably not new to a lot of you listening. They're raved about on um, YouTube and Fragrantica, etc. Um, but I will pitch in my own two cents. Um, this is Casablanca. Um, by Swiss Arabian as well and um, this is pretty affordable I would say for the size of the bottle for a while it was very inexpensive I want to say 30 to 50 dollars on Amazon um, but now it's up to about 63 I think it's becoming more popular and harder to get as people talk more about it um, this was created in 2016 and the top notes are apple and grape the heart notes are patchouli iris white woods and the base notes are musk, amber, caramel, and peru blossom. Um, I'm gonna spray this on, let's see, my wrist over here. And this one, this is another one, it's really interesting. Um, something I, I had to kind of learn <laughs> the hard way over the years is, when I was younger especially, I actually thought I didn't like a lot of perfumes because when I, I would judge a perfume when I first sprayed it, and often I'd be like, whew. And secondly, sometimes they all smelled the same when they're right out of the sprayer. This is one of those, I was kind of like, what's the big deal when I sprayed it? And then it dries down. Oh my God, that's amazing. Okay, so at first, I'll just say, and it's kind of running through, I would say, half of these scents that I'm um, talking about tonight. The way musks are portrayed, are to me sometimes chemically in a way that I don't like. Um, they smell chemically. And there's just something I can't, I have a little hard time getting past. 
but um, within a couple minutes this becomes freaking gorgeous oh my god and then I think again once we get into the colder months it'll be insanely beautiful but what it turns into is a pearish appleish smoky vanilla for real once that chemically musk kind of dies down and that caramel kind of nature comes out so yeah vanilla caramel a little bit of pear and this like smokiness Casablanca if you like pear scents uh, smoky vanilla scents caramel scents get this and just be patient with it let it dry down a little bit and it's gonna blow your mind it's so beautiful so Casablanca by Swiss Arabian and then last but not least my favorite of the uh, Middle Eastern or Arabic scents I've tried so far oh my god I love it so much Ragbuzz Latafa this is such a steal too this is um, 3.4 ounce a big big bottle comes in this gorgeous box so I got a set where it was this nestled in here and then a little little deodorant thank you for the extra gift this whole thing was like 26 or 28 dollars online crazy and this is freaking gorgeous like niche quality if somebody charged $200 for this people would still be buying it like crazy and I have to spray this because it smells so good on my skin okay we're going up here into this real estate oh my gosh and this is one of those it smells tremendous right out of the bottle but it smells tremendous in a whole nother way when it dries down so this to me is most dominantly uh, vanilla but let me read to you the notes because I was surprised actually um, it was yeah more it had more notes than I thought um, so it doesn't say what are the top mid and hard notes but or top mid and, and base notes but it says just agar wood and oud or oud same thing musk vanilla sugar sandalwood and incense and it's funny when I was reading some reviews about this people get into this whole debate about if there's a scent for sugar and that cracks me up because of course there's a scent for sugar anyways I think sugar totally smells a certain way and burnt sugar caramelized sugar melted sugar totally have their own things and this to me is um, it doesn't have that mid to me it doesn't have that medicinal oud quality oud gives it a depth and a woodiness and a smokiness and I know that there are notes of incense in here but Oh my god, you guys. It smells so good. I can't even believe it. It's like deep, the deepest vanilla you can imagine. Smoky, almost burnt. And it almost has when, I remember we were all mind blown when Angel by Mugler first came out because that and Bulgari, I think Black and a few other things, they were, since we're first starting to kind of experiment, I think at that time, or at least it was when I first remember it, with this kind of rubber scent or this burning rubber scent. And again, who's to say why we like what we like? I like that scent strangely. It gives like a, you know, probably because I grew up in an industrial city of Akron, Ohio, and like um, the smell of industry was everywhere. And I live in Cleveland now, another industrial city. and. You know, so to me, even if you're smelling the best smell ever, there are background scents going on. And I kind of like the grittiness or depth that that smell gives something. And so to me, this is predominantly a beautiful, resinous, deep vanilla um, with this smoky, rubbery, like, quality. Um, and I just think it's gorgeous. It's sexy as hell. Like, just beautiful. And again, it's one of those, I'm wearing it, I'm gonna love it all day in this warm, warm, warm uh, 90 degree weather, but it, I can imagine, is just gonna be amazing in the winter, just so, so gorgeous. So I, this to me is, if you like vanilla, if you like incense or resins, you have gotta get your hands on this, Latafa Baragba. Um, and again, I think I paid just like somewhere between 26 and 28 for this whole set. And, Again, this would be hundreds if it were a niche scent and it would be worth it. It's it's beautiful. So highly recommend. Um, and I would say 
overall, I, there are things I, I continue to learn and I'm relatively new to Middle Eastern sense and ouds especially. Um, and so I, I kind of look forward to wrapping back to these in three or five years because, you know, as my nose starts to catch on to these scents more and I compare and contrast, I'm excited to see um, where I go with this. And um, I would highly suggest, I think these are so interesting and I would say pretty darn different from like the French perfume background that I'm used to or the American perfumes. I definitely see some similarities in these. They're to me very strong which I like a strong perfume um, they definitely make a statement um, you get a lot of bang for your buck um, and I think I think it's really cool that they're unisex that that I think anybody can wear them um, and yeah anyways I just think they're really earthy and interesting um, so would highly recommend if you haven't started to um, explore Middle Eastern scents that there's a whole world and there's oh my god there's so many so I'm starting to learn so 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 many and I, I thought it was so cool when I was in Guerlain in Paris um, I saw so many Middle Eastern people there um, exploring perfume you can tell that it, it is really important to the culture exploring both French perfume but also there are a ton of shops opening up in the Champs-Élysées and Paris in general and all over the world that are focused on um, uh, Arabian or Middle Eastern made perfume so I'm excited to see how they push our market uh, further and further and and how we influence each other. So I would love to hear more from you about if you wear any Middle Eastern or Arabic perfumes, what are your favorites, um, what have I not talked about that you absolutely love, have you tried any of those that I've talked about, and um, what cultures do you think are not represented enough in perfume making? Um, when I talk about you know the French background, I know there's a lot of Italian houses, a lot of American houses. I'm learning slowly about more um, houses uh, by black and brown people all over the diaspora. I would love to hear from you what cultures you think could um, we could give more light to or are underrepresented. So anyways, feel free to leave me a comment and I hope to talk to you soon. Have a great day, bye.